<laughs> Got my little list sorted out up here, but first thing we're gonna start with, MAF sensor cleaner, upper engine cleaner, get all that kind of clean through because I wanna change the spark plugs, but I wanna do all the cleaning with the old spark plugs in there. This one's relatively easy. Oh, we gotta clean our, um, our air filter as well. I don't have any air filter oil though, so it's just kinda gonna get a wash out. So we just got some uh, automotive electronic cleaner. That's just gonna get sprayed all on the inside of this thing. Just really give it a good soaking. Maybe while I'm here, my uh, battery looks like it's kind of dead. <laughs> but I think that's because this connection here on the ground is pretty average. We got some upper ranging cleaner here. I don't know what this actually does. Is it a foam? Oh, yeah. Fit in there. Oh. We're going to let that sit for 10 15 minutes, chuck this one back on, and once it's done sitting, start the engine, it'll get rid of that initial kind of crap that's in there and then we will spray this one up through there and that'll kind of just cycle through you got to keep the revs up otherwise it kind of clonks out on you Oof! everything is hot from the Sun Here's the fun one to do on Subarus, spark plugs. And all those connections down there look grotty. I'm pretty sure my rocker cover, valve cover, whichever one you want to call it, uh, I'm pretty sure that's leaking. So there is oil on everything. But we'll start off by getting some things out of our way. Dribble on everything. There goes the camera. Right, two, get those out of the way. Right, the shorter one goes at the front. See, like that's just that's just from the doing the cables. My hands were so clean before that. I believe a 12 mil. Cool. ones were on which side so I'm gonna place those exactly how they sit in the car. Look, sorry guys that's probably gonna be the best I can get. We just minced the shit out of our finger.
Now it's a game of fit your tools to the socket. Cool, cool, cool. As long as we can crack it. Coolant lines, just really being a pain in the ass right now. And with that, we have one spark plug out. So we've got that automotive electronic cleaner. I'm just gonna try and clean up all these plugs and connections in here. Um, there we go. This one, actually, pretty clean. We've got these laid out in the order that they sit in the engine. Uh, we're just going to try and do our best to wipe down what we can and then the rest we'll hit with the spray. We got some laser platinum premium plugs. I have no idea what any of that means, but this is what it told me my car needed. Recommended gap is 0 0.028. And that says regardless on copper, platinum, iridium, blah, blah, blah. So got one of these handy little coin things here. I'm just gonna go around, check all these plugs, make sure they're all at 0 0.08. And then we can start to Get them all in. Whoa, don't drop it. Hopefully they go in just as easy as they came out. I will definitely not be able to fit my torque bar in here. So it's more of just like Feeling it up. Then we got our front coil. Sit onto there. Beautiful. And our back one. Come on. Find it. Find the plug. Ho oh, oh. ho. Down to our last plug. It's gone much smoother than I thought it was going to go. Alrighty, we should be, we should be back in business. Ah, ah, no. So I've picked up one of these things. Woo, 
don't drop it. So we got a fluid damper or super damper, whichever you guys want to call it. This thing is ticking almost at 300,000. I'd imagine the stock one is still the one that it came from the factory with. Uh, the problem with that is the rubber kind of wears out. It doesn't really balance the harmonics at all of the engine or the vibrations. There's a whole bunch of sciencey stuff that I have no idea. But uh, Smedia, I think that's how you say the channel name. He does a really good video. It was after watching that one that I decided we're going to go one of these and not just a new OEM replacement. I'm doing a full cooling flush anyway, so all that's coming out regardless. Nearly five years since we last did that, since we last changed the coolant. Just gonna get a full clean out, full flush, get some fresh cooling in there. Now once we give this thing a bit of air. Yeah. Absolutely none of that made it into there. Put it to a general clean out, just some clean water going through it. So as we got to start our car, turn the heater on full. Ooh, that didn't sound great. Heater's up, heater's on full. Then we should see all that stuff start to cycle through. Time is done. It's bloody raining, but it's not gonna stop us. I won't let We're gonna give that a hose out, I reckon. We're gonna try again tomorrow and see if we have any luck with it being a bit dry. Uh, we also have this part of the radiator blocked off now, so that's just a piece of aluminium. Old animal feeding bowl. So that's now in there, that's got it all blocked off and sealed. I'm still gonna put the cap on anyway, just to keep pressure down on top of it. Just because we do have the outlet up here, which is what the car originally only came with. And then that makes it easier for when I want to relocate our overflow to somewhere here. All right, the next fun one. Cracking this thing loose. Loosen up our alternator, get this belt off, because I don't have a crank pulley tool. We're gonna have to try and improvise and use the belt. It might destroy the belt, uh, but at least it's an easy belt to replace. Fold the belt a little bit over itself, and that'll hold it, and now we should Hopefully, <laughs> be having to crack this loose. That's right. Come on. Oh. It's coming. Slowly. And that 
is our factory crank pulley off. I can see this one isn't quite lining up with our other pulleys here and that's as far as it's going to go because of the cover because with the factory one we do have that cut out around here for that lip to sit into whereas this one we've got that flat surface now if you're wondering why i didn't just take the cover off it's because the bolts on the cover half of them just spun so there's a nut on the back and that's like pressed into the plastic from what i've managed to find out and uh, whoever's done the cover up last time when they did the timing belt, they've just cranked them down way too tight, it's broken that nut on the back loose, and there's no way to actually get the cover off without completely breaking it. So that's why cover stayed on the car, had to do a real dodgy way and just hope that we didn't get too much, if any, like plastic shavings all inside. It just made the process more annoying. This is not the way. Don't do it this way, guys. I think some paper towels might be our best friend here. And if we're very careful, we might not rip the paper towel to shreds. Let's try this. And that has worked a treat. Yeah, we should be sweet with a fit up now. We're good. Right, so it's got these things here to put like bolts into it. Uh, so I've got these two bolts here. They're going to be used as leverage to stick a bar through it. And that is going to be what holds that from spinning. I think because it's in gear and I got the handbrake and stuff on, it's now not, like it doesn't want to, like it can't spin physically unless the car rolls forward. So we should actually be able to just use our breaker bar, breaker bar, torque bar. I don't know how you say the name, but NASOC forums. It looks like someone's got something from a Subaru manual. 118 Newton meters. Watch this bolt snap. There we go. Now the belts can get back on. It does need new belts at some point, but we'll get there. It's like putting on bike chains all over again. Plugs plugged in. Oh, we're sweating. Absolutely dripping, lads. <laughs> Because I don't have any funnels that fit in there. Or I could. I have an idea. How well does this fit in there? Yeah. Kind of average in there as well. It doesn't actually sit all the way in or make a seal. We've got two more things of oil, a five litre and a one litre. This one litre is going to be sitting in the back of the car for like 
top ups if we need it. That's gonna get tipped into there, so we'll get back into this again. One of the last things on this refresh list, new diff fluid. I don't know when this was last replaced, so I figured we may as well do it while we kind of got everything here. I'm gonna try crack this one open first. Yeah, I can't chuck my breaker bar on there. So I'm gonna have to jack this thing up, which I'm skeptical about because I'd rather not break it. Oh, it would do that, wouldn't it? Mmm. There's some nice little bits of metal sitting on that. And then this just gets filled up until we kind of see it start to seep out. And you can just hook straight into there. Ha <laughs> ha! I will say this is a very efficient pump. That is it for the time being on this thing. Um, oil and oil filter is something that I also need to do on this, but that's gonna be a separate video because I'm also gonna put on a sandwich plate, get an oil pressure, um, oil pressure gorge, gauge, gorge. English is hard right now, but I need to get to work. I need to clean up first. I got a mess and a half in the backyard. Oh man. And then we can drive it. Oh, I'm so keen to take it for a drive again. <laughs>